This video is a demonstration of how I'd like you to approach this tone paper drawing. I'd like you to start with just your white pencil. I've sped up the video here, the drawing part of it, so that um, we get through the entire process rather quickly. Um, you are expected to spend a few hours on this drawing, and you can also take it in segments. Uh, I've labeled this part part one, where I'm working strictly with the white pencil. The reason I'm working only with the white pencil is because I really want to be analyzing the variety of values that I see. And you want to think about the paper that you're working on as the gray, the medium value. And we have to make the gray whiter in some places, or lighter, and we use the white pencil for that. And then in other areas, we have to make the gray darker, and we use the black pencil for that. So as you can see, as I'm drawing, that I'm not automatically um, using a heavy touch to make things opaque white, but I'm using a softer touch um, and building up the value of white from less sh from sheer to um, less sheer or more opaque as I see fit. So if you remember from all the other modules um, and the drawing assignments that you've had, remember that looking is one of the greatest skills an artist can, um, can have. So I'm looking very, very intently and very critically at this still life and I am determining by comparing one tone to another tone what is light, what is dark, what is medium value, and I'm making decisions. You see right here I went back to my regular pencil because I saw in the model I saw something that I had forgotten to draw. So I went back to the regular pencil to draw that. I don't really want to be outlining anything with the white pencil. I'm really working edge to edge on within shapes. As you can see in the way I'm doing this drawing, I don't outline the shape first and then color it in, but I'm looking at the shape and I'm looking at the model and I'm drawing to try to represent as closely as I see um, what the values are. You see also that I'm jumping around with, within the page because um, I take a segment at a time and again I'm, I'm judging, I'm evaluating, is it lighter? or is it darker than, than medium tone. I'm leaving a lot of areas uh, undrawn because those areas will either be the paper color or they will be black. Now this is part two. I've switched to the black pencil and I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to be um, not automatically coloring something in black, but I'm going to be using uh, a light touch so that some of my uh, shading will be sheer or see-through and that way I'm seeing some of the colored paper underneath so it's going to be less black and then I put more pressure on my pencil and go over areas when I want it to be darker. Again um, you shouldn't be outlining you should be oh, here I go with the pencil again here I'm erasing um, I'm erasing some of the lines I made to describe the still life because I feel that I didn't represent that as best as I could. So I went back to the pencil to, to change those lines. Remember that you can't really erase colored pencil. It's very hard to, to do that. So um, take your time and be very accurate with um, the tones that you put in. Because I've sped up this vi video, you're not seeing places where I hesitate, but oftentimes I stop drawing and look at the still life again and really make judgments on the value changes. So again, this is something that's uh, not second nature for most people, but uh, being that this is module 10, we've been doing this for 10 weeks now, I think that you've developed a greater sensitivity to the nuances of shading, and this um, assignment's giving you a great opportunity to show those off. So let me emphasize again, um, no outlining. Even though you see that I just drew some lines there, I'm not outlining a shape. I'm outlining a space in which I'm going to be shading and the tone of that shading is going to meet the line so that the line disappears. We don't want to have hard lines around any of the forms because that will just flatten the area. Here I am towards the end of the drawing and I'm putting just some finishing touches on 
um, the darkness right now, and then you're going to see me go back to the white and put some finishing touches on the white. Once you have the majority of the drawing done, uh, white first and black second, and the majority of the drawing is done, it's certainly fine to go back and with um, new eyes, reevaluate again and decide if something has to be darker, which is what I'm doing now, or something has to be lighter. Remember that you can do this drawing in more than one sitting. So um, what you should do is you should set up your space so that your things aren't going to be moved around and also set up your lighting so that it will be consistent and not change. Um, so you could do the drawing of the still life in one session. It may take you an hour to do. And then um, the next session, you might want to put the whites in. That might take another hour. The third session might be putting the blacks in another hour. And then I would go back and evaluate again before you consider it finished. Uh, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you some assignments that students have done, and I'm going to critique them um, to let you know some of the pitfalls and some of the good things that are happening in their drawing so that maybe this will aid you as you work on your drawing. So I'm almost done, and um, as you can see, it is um, mimicking the space in the still life, which is you know something I was trying to do. There are certainly some drawing flaws here as I look at it, but it's um, it's it's got a deep space, which is what I am I was aiming for, and I'm happy with that. All right, so here's some things to consider. This work is pretty flat. There's a lot of outline going on in this drawing, and there isn't a big difference between the grays. It's either flat gray or white, very little black. This one, I think they went too heavy with the white and the black, and not, not a lot of gray areas showing. Um, this one is a little bit better in terms of the gray, but it's very harsh. It uh, could be a lot more sensitive to the places in between white and black. The same here, and again, the outlining, it's a nice design, but the outlining really takes away from the depth. Um, this one, I'm not really sure what's going on with the pieces inside the box. The tones don't really make sense. Um, here you see that um, the wrong side of the paper is being used. You see that waffle quality showing up. Same thing here. Um, you see that waffling. And um, again, not very sensitive to the value changes in this drawing. This is a beautiful drawing. Um, could it be a little more sensitive? This one is very sensitive. It looks um, has a lot of depth. This one has a lot of depth as well. Um, which is one of the things we're looking for. This could use some stronger darks and maybe a little more whites, but it's lovely. This a um, little bit too harsh on the black. And this one is actually doing a really good job. They're showing the entire box, which is kind of interesting, but there's a lot of uh, sensitivity to the value changes and the medium tones in this drawing. So I hope this was helpful and good luck as you begin your work for, for this week.